Hi, I'm Andrew Rowland, the designer of Napoleon's Imperium, the new Napoleonic board game from Compass Games. This video is designed just to give you a mountain peak view of the mechanics of the game and how it actually works. It's not designed as an extensive walkthrough, but just a quick snapshot so you can get some idea um, before you go into play. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So let's start at the beginning. Napoleon's Imperium, the official rule book. We're going to start with the standard rules and it's abbreviated just for this video. The objective of Napoleon's Imperium is for one side to achieve victory over the other by a battle point victory or a capital victory. A battle point victory is achieved by accumulating the highest number of battle points at the end of an agreed playing year. You can find the battle point score charts on page 34 and page 35 of the rule book. There you'll have a separate chart for the French and a separate chart for the British. Whereas the capital victory is achieved by capturing at least three enemy capitals and holding them simultaneously for one full playing year. There are eight capitals on the playing map. You'll see them indicated in the circles. The sequence of play, there are three phases to the play. Income purchase, two, attack, and three, movement. The order of the play is on your Empire reference card. This card is very good to refer to throughout the game. In the first year of play, there is no attack phase. This allows players to maneuver for war. Phase one, income purchase. Income equals the total number of territories plus any battle card consequences. You add the number of territories together to find your total income, then add the battle card consequences. Income is then marked on your economy line with the coin counter as such. Income can be used to make purchase using the military cost table on your Empire reference card. For example, for 26 income points, the French could purchase one artillery, one infantry, one cavalry, and two fleets. Your purchase units must be placed in your purchase tray. They are not placed on the map until the end of the movement phase. And this is your purchase tray to the side there. So that's phase one, income purchase. Your purchase units are placed in the purchase tray. Phase two, attack. You can attack outside the borders with any units on the map. Phase three, movement. You can move any units that have not taken part in the attack phase within friendly borders or sea. Purchase placement. You can now place your purchase units on the map. Land units must start in your capital and sea in your seaports. At the end of your movement phase, your purchases can be placed into your capital and your ports. This will signify the end of your turn. Phase two, attack. The sequence of attack is one, attack the territory, two, resolve the attack, three, loser draws a battle card. You can attack by one or many adjacent territories, factoring in your movement limits. Your movement limits can be found on your empire reference card. Attack is to the last man standing, so you continue to roll the dice until one side is eliminated. So the attack sequence is, attack the territory. Move your units you wish to attack into the one target territory. You can move some several territories there. Resolve the attack. Attack rolls the dice first according to their attack abilities. The defender then rolls second according to their defense abilities. You keep rolling until one side is eliminated. The battle victor takes the enemy territory, its income, and its flag.
the defeated nation loses its territory, its income, its flag, and also picks up a battle card. In the case of a draw, all units are removed and the territory reverts to the original owner. The original owner then places one flag and one infantry on the territory. Battle casualties. All battle casualties inflicted against a player are also chosen for removal by that inflicted player. Captured capital consequences. One, you are reduced to half income. Two, you are considered in exile. Three, all your units purchased now start from the allied capital. Four, your objective is now the liberation of your capital. Capital territories are identified by the capital symbol within them. Capturing a capital bonus. One, you receive a captured capital battle point card. Two, you receive additional commander, minor commander. Three, at the anniversary of occupation, you receive one free infantry to reinforce your new capital. There are two types of commanders. There are major commanders and two, there are minor commanders. The major commander can be imprisoned or paroled if captured, but it cannot die. They add a plus one to either attack, defense or movement of one type of unit per year. They commence at the start of the game from your capital and they have land unit value of up to three territories. The minor commander, they die upon capture, they're executed. They add a plus one or attack to defense of one type of unit, but not movement. They are placed on the board when you capture an enemy's capital, but they start from your own capital. They have a land unit value of up to three territories, and they can join a battle with a major commander, but must be assigned to a different type of unit. Captured Commander If you win a land or sea battle where the defeated army or fleet has a major commander attached, by default you have also captured their major commander. If you capture a commander, you receive a captured commander battle point card. You then must roll a dice to determine if the commander is imprisoned or paroled. Imprisoned a dice roll of six or less. The captured major commander is placed in your nascent purchase tray to be released after your next full playing turn. When released, the commander is turned to its own capital. Note, minor commanders are executed upon capture. Paroled, a dice roll of seven or more. A captured major commander is placed in your enemy's purchase tray to release after their next full playing turn. When released, the commander returns to their capital. Note, minor commanders are executed upon capture. Sea attack. Fleet vs fleet. Fleet battles are fought just like land battles, but only with the ships. The victor receives a sea victory card. Like land units, your fleet's attack and defense abilities are located on your empire reference card under attack and defense. Sea attack and avoid. If you're attacked at sea, you must do battle. However, the attacker can choose to avoid battle with a successful dice roll. Avoiding battle is useful when you want to pass through an occupied sea territory to attack a different target. However, if your enemy chooses to do, to do battle, you must roll a dice to determine if you can avoid this battle. Use the fleet site chart. Spoils of victory, sea prize. If you win a sea victory, you're awarded a sea victory battle point card. And, if, and you may roll a dice for a chance to capture the enemy fleet. Use the fleet sighting chart to determine the dice allowance. Invasion. Land units 
can travel on fleets to make invasions at enemy ports. To make an invasion, you must have land units aboard your fleets, and you must also have enough fleet movements available to reach your intended target destination. Your fleets are considered laden if they have land units aboard for any part of their journey. Your laden movement allowance is found on your Empire reference chart. This chart also sets out how many land units each fleet may carry. There is no penalty for land units when boarding a fleet, however it costs one territory movement to disembark. Invasions can be made at any enemy ports which have a helm symbol. Before you can make an invasion, you must first do battle with any enemy fleet in the sea port adjacent. If laden fleets are destroyed, all units aboard are destroyed also. Invasion Preemptive Strike Fleets may fire an initial opening invasion support shot, one dice per fleet. Artillery may return fire with one shot, one dice per artillery unit. See your invasion capabilities on your Empire reference chart. On your Empire reference chart, a fleet's preemptive strike capability is at the base of the attack abilities table. An artillery's defensive port capability is at the base of the defense abilities table. Invasion land battle. Once a preemptive strike and artillery return fire is completed, the land battle can take place using your attack and defense capabilities of each nation. Again, on your Empire reference chart. The attacking nation rolls first, followed by the defending nation. Casualties are then removed by each nation, fighting on until one side is eliminated. The consequences of defeat or the spoils of victory can now be actioned. The spoils of victory. The victor takes the enemy territory, the enemy flag, places their own flag on the territory and in this case an example can take the captured capital card. The consequences of defeat, again with this example, the defeated lose their territory income, they lose their flag, they take a battle card and the example below, they lose, lose their capital, they are placed on half income until their liberation. Invasion limits. Each fleet has a limit of two invasions per year. Fleets that are joined in the first invasion must continue as one fleet for any further invasion or sea actions in the same playing year. Prior to invasion, a fleet must declare which land units are taking part. Joint Sea Invasion. Fleets from com from an allied empire may choose to combine with your fleet to increase your overall strength in battle. To do this, one ally must move their fleet into the same sea territory as your fleet and declare joining fleet. In doing so, all movement for this combined fleet is considered ended for that year. From the next year, this combined fleet moves as one fleet under the host empire's command. Combined, combined fleets may attack and defend together, however each fleet maintains its own empire's attack, defense and movement ability. This also means the combined fleet's movement is restricted to the slowest fleet's speed. Joint Sea Invasions Combined fleets may make joint sea invasions together but only the host nation can carry land units and only of the same nationality. Allied fleets in a combined fleet die first in battle.
fleet break-off. Combined fleets may part ways via simple break-off declaration and moving apart in the next playing turn. However, this is dependent on whether a fleet has already exhausted its movement in that turn. Neutral territories. Neutral territories can be invaded and owned, but at the cost of one unit as a penalty. Note, one unit must remain in each territory for it to remain owned. A neutral's income can be quite useful towards building your economy. Battle point cards. Each empire has 20 historical base battle point cards. They are drawn if an empire loses a land battle. However, battle point cards do not apply to sea battles. Battle cards have a mixture of positive, negative and neutral consequences. There is one Imperium card, which is your best card, and there is one Disaster card, which is your worst. Phase 3, Movement. A land unit moves by land territories, as well as being able to be transported by sea aboard a fleet. Fleets can only move by sea territories. This same rule applies for attack phase and movement phase. Only units that have not taken part in an attack phase may take part in a movement phase. However, you may move as many land and sea units in a turn as you have available movement for. Land and sea units cannot move through a point corner borders that have a V shape. They can only move through clearly defined borders. There are some general rules. Allies can travel through each other's territories, unless a battle card treaty consequence says otherwise. Allies can defend together when attacked in the same territory, but they cannot attack together as this is a turn-based game. Independent fleets have a limit of two movement transportations of land units a year, subject to their own laden movement limits. An artillery unit is equivalent to 1.5 land units when transported upon a fleet, so two artillery units is equivalent to three land units for transportation. Your laden movement allowance is on your empire's reference chart. This chart also shows how many units each fleet may carry. Your fleets are considered laden if they have land units aboard for any part of their journey. In movement phase, you may bunny hop land units, but you must leave at least one unit in each territory in order to retain it. Special Abilities and Special Units Each empire has special abilities different than the next. There are two empires that have different special units. The Ottoman Empire has camels and the British Empire has rifles. Elimination A player is eliminated if their capital is captured and they have no land units left on the map to occupy it again. Rebellion. An eliminated player may roll for Rebellion for each playing year. They need to roll one on a ten-sided dice to succeed. They can roll one dice for each occupied territory. If the Rebellion roll is successful, the eliminated player can return to the game. They can place an infantry, a cavalry and artillery in each territory they successfully dot rolled one for. Then all the occupying units in the rebelled territory return to their own capital and their income for this territory is forfeited. If the rebelled territory is not a capital, the resurrected player play stays in exile on half income. Note minimum income is 2. Napoleon's Imperium optional advance rules are not covered in this video. 
please read the rule book for the optional rules of time limits, spy and weather. I hope you've enjoyed this snapshot of Napoleon's Imperium's basic rules. I encourage you now to read the full rules for specific details and explanations not covered under this video. I do hope you enjoyed this game. Take care.